Dark farming is a very lucrative and profitable livestock farming as there are many dark breeds around the world. Here in West Africa, precisely in Ghana, you barely see dark farming on commercial scale as you do for poultry. This week on The Ghanaian Farmer, I tell the story of Madame Charity Akotia, a professional teacher and the overall national best farmer 2023 here in Ghana. I am very honored and privileged to be talking to her and telling the story of how she nurtured these ideas and scale up every day to get to this level of crowning or becoming the overall national best farmer. This week or on this episode, we are going to give beginners to also love that, but do not know how to go about it, how to start, where do you start from, the feed, is there any difference even between that feed and poultry feed? These and many more, Madam Charity Akotia will be telling me. This is the Ghanaian farmer get interactive on our social media platform facebook linkedin and youtube the Ghanaian farmer my name is anyona i'm going for a quick breather when i come back i will be joining madam charity akotia the overall national best farmer for 2023 stay with me <laughs> This is a Ghanaian farmer, and on this week, I bring you an insightful Hello. story, a very interesting person, an inspiration to many young women who want to go into agriculture. Madam Charity Akotia. Hello, mommy. Congratulations uh, once again. You. I didn't have the privilege to see you on that day, but today I am so grateful to God for making it happen. Congratulations. Thank you. How did you feel when you were declared the overall national best farmer? Were you already informed or it was on that day they declared it? It was on that day. Hey! Yes. Because I felt the tension on your face. And how was the feeling? I was so enlightened and grateful mm -hmm. because I've been struggling for this position for a very long time. Okay. Yes. So the day I was mentioning when they started everything mm. i was just praying mm. praying mm. praying the people were going before they said the final winner yes so i that i i, I took a very deep breath, breath. <laughs> <laughs> but i thought today okay I thought today right everything is over ah so, it, it has paid off yes. the many years yes please. of being a woman in agriculture yes how many years so far 30 years hey i started 1993 30 years yes interesting what were you doing before the thought of agriculture came to mind you know when i was young uh, secondary school time i saw i was reading at uh, settlement farms to support my education okay so after training college mm. i came here i was posted to aguna west okay yeah. so i decided to start because you know i, I, I am a teacher mm -hmm. And the, the salary, the lorry fare and everything, I said, oh, why can't I enter into agriculture? Because I was doing this to support my education. Mm -hmm. So after that, I asked my head teacher to look for a, a land for me. Mm -hmm. So I started with an acre okay. of pepper. Mm -hmm. So I started growing the pepper, mm -hmm. extracting seed mm -hmm. for sale, yes. raising seedlings for sale. Mm -hmm. And I realized that there's money, what I've been, a uh, financial gain mm -hmm. is more than my salary okay. as a teacher so why can't i, can't I venture mm -hmm. and expand it yes so i started with another vegetables mm -hmm. all along and entered to crop farming mm -hmm. where i i started with cocoa mm -hmm. and uh, coconut mm -hmm. later on so oh then i have to enter into a uh, animal husbandry too I see. so i started with that one I see. Till, till so then. in all how many types of things you do i mean mention we have that yes. farming poultry i see goats you have cow you have pigs yes what else rabbits okay grass cutter right mushroom okay snails um turkey uh guinea fowl 
<laughs> and poultry. Their numbers are endless. Yes. yes. What is the land size of your farm? Okay, in all all together, it is uh, this year mm -hmm. I I work on eight hundred and fifty-five acres of land. Jesus. 855 yes. Yes. acres? Yes. Wow, that is massive. Yes, please. You are doing well. Thank you. All this that you've mentioned will take them one after, after the, the other. other. So Ghanaian farmers, <laughs> you don't know what is coming from Greenworth farms. Now we'll start with duck farming. Okay. Why do you think duck farming is not done on commercial scale in Ghana? I think because of uh, the culture. Okay. The culture of the people and the, the, the taste. Uh, it looks as if uh, people don't have much interest in the consumption of ducks. Right. Mm -hmm. So gradually they are picking it up. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So that is why. Mm -hmm. And people also say that because they, they are water loving animals, yes. they find it difficult to enter into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Uh, 16 years ago, when you started your duck, mm. okay, how many did you start with? I started with three. Just three? A male and two females. And two females. Yes, please. Okay, at what age did you buy or weeks old did you buy? Was it already uh, matured laying eggs or yes. had to feed it they, for a while? They, no, mm. they were matured ones, okay. but they were not laying eggs. Okay. So I crossed them Okay. Uh -huh, before they started. You know, they can lay many eggs and hatch a lot. Okay. One can hatch more than 20 at the time. Eh? Yes. One duck? Yes. So duck and chicken, who who gave birth to more? Ducks. Ducks? Yes. Interesting. All right, so how many weeks did you have to feed it for? Do you remember before it started laying eggs for you? The first one? Yes. Oh, they were already mature, so they mm. stayed with me for about uh, six weeks okay. before they started mm. laying. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. How many eggs does it lay? Five the first one I could remember it was fifteen. Fifteen. Yes. For one and, duck. Yes, and it had all, and was able to keep all, all of them. them. Yes. Interesting. Uh, the now, second one laid uh -huh. eighteen. Eight. Yes. That time we were not having this kind of crow picking them. Right. So I was just leaving them around. Yes. I see. Okay. What kind of feed do I give to my ducks? Because I'm a startup. I don't know anything. I'm just starting. Per the information you're giving me, what feed do you give to your ducks? I've been giving them poultry feeds and also uh, water leaves. They are uh, they also love that, that leaves. So we've been picking the leaves for them and I've been giving them uh, uh, the poultry feed. Mm -hmm. Also, <laughs> after cooking cassava and things, we've been giving them what we eat in the house. We do give them. Really? Yes. So they eat, they eat virtually everything? Yes. Okay. That is not poisonous. Okay. Mm. All right. Now you mentioned about crossing. Um, at what week old should my duck be before I cross it? Okay, about uh, 25 weeks. Old? Yes. It's ready for crossing? Yes. Do you have to force it to cross each other or they can cross no. and just stand in this way? No, I leave them okay. to do the crossing themselves. Okay. So I don't cross them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have to also put them in one uh, room so they can cross, or just the way they are walking, they can go about crossing each other? Yes. Okay. But what I do is, mm -hmm. for some for time, mm -hmm. I change the female, the male ones okay. because of inbreeding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I change them and bought another one from different place. Okay. So it means I have to sell all the male and bring in new male yes. from a different farm. Yes. Okay. To avoid the inbreeding. Yes. Please. Okay. So when it starts crossing after 25 weeks old, how many days will it take then to start laying the eggs? Oh, from there they can mm. start at any time. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So if one duck will give you almost 13 to 18 eggs, it means that in no time I should be able to multiply. Yes. Is duck farming expensive in terms no, of no. feeding and all that? It is not. Since they do eat everything okay. that we also eat. Yes. So after cooking, let's mm. say rice, mm -hmm. uh, after eating uh, banku, fufu, cassava, we do gather those things, the waste in the house, mm. we do give it to them. I see. Uh, okay. Now let's talk about the drinkers and the feed what time of the day as a small farmer when i walk into my farm what time of the day do i give them feed 
we have been giving them early in the morning. Okay. We give them feed. We yes. clean the feeders yes. and give them another one. Okay. And also uh, the waters. Mm -hmm. We have bowls that we use to uh, give, give them uh, feed. Uh, okay. Give them water. Okay. Uh -huh. Be because mm -hmm. we cannot be cleaning, we don't have the pond. Okay. Yes. That makes the work difficult for people. Right. But with this, that this was my practice for a very long time. Okay. And with this one, mm -hmm. uh, the young ones will not immerse mm -hmm. into the water. Mm -hmm. So I just feed them, I give them water yes. like uh, okay. ordinary chicken okay. and goats. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Do I change the water I see in the bowls? Yes, we do change it in the afternoons. When it On is, daily basis? Yes. Okay. morning and afternoon because mm -hmm. they i would say that they are very dirty animals yes yes Just so pigs. yes okay so pigs are clean than this, this uh, hey. mm. yes yeah. so this one is senior when we get to the piggery i'll tell you much <laughs> okay. about them so we'll change it mm -hmm. uh, and uh, give them fresh water mm. in the afternoon mm. so in the morning too we do the same thing okay uh, all right so at what time do you consider that my um that are matured yeah. especially when you want to sell all your meal yeah. what what how many weeks old do i consider it as mature from 54 animals? weeks from 54 weeks yes do you, do you scale before you sell yes because we have another aspect of the farm that we scale our things and sell okay. we do scale we dress them yes. for the uh uh those who are interested mm. we dress them mm. and scale them for them oh, okay you don't sell it just this way you we can we can do that and dress it not really mm. Mm -hmm. if you are for example you want to roll some and mm -hmm. you, you will come to us we just uh, catch it for you yes okay yeah. now talking about sales how much will the 54 week old duck cost me currently we are selling at 250 cds hey mommy you're making money let me count the ones we have you already and start charging. <laughs> <laughs> okay 250 cds yes please. okay and uh, that's the market price or the farm gate price that is the farm gate price. The farm gate price. Yes. So how often do you sell some of these ducks? When people come, because this year, for example, I'll say that end of year things didn't go well for us at okay. all. The market was very slow. Like you will not come and meet these things here. Mm. Uh -huh. Who will come? Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So it is going gradually. Slowly. Yes. Slowly. Yes. Okay. Who are your typical or regular buyers of ducks? Is it restaurant, chow bar, individuals? Individuals and other farmers. Okay. Yes. All right. But is duck farming expensive? It is not expensive. Compared to chicken? It is not expensive. Okay. You know, chickens, right. when the time comes for yes. vaccination yes. and things, you miss it, yes. you are in trouble. Yes. But those things, uh, we do give them antibiotics, we do give them vitamins that it, we don't have any shadow for them okay. as the other one. So they are disease resistant? Yes. Compared to yes, the chicken. Yes, yes. Okay. But is there any disease to that and worry that? Eh, I have been watching people's uh, that they, they, I think they are paralyzed. Okay. But maybe because we have been giving them some treatment, right. we don't realize. They are safe. Yes. Okay. Mm. All right. Now, what, what, what structure do you recommend that as a startup farmer, I should put in place to start my duck farming? What kind of structure? You can fence and build a a, a coop okay. in it yes. like this one. Yes. When they hatch, because of the crow yes. and other mm -hmm. birds, mm. we do uh, keep, them. keep them here. Some like uh, brooding them mm -hmm. for about four or five weeks. Okay. When their feathers mm -hmm. started coming, yeah. we release you bring them. them out. Yes. Okay. Mm. I see. All right. Are there any challenges associated with duck farming? Yes, the marketing. The slow marketing. Yes. That's the, it. Yes. The slow marketing. Okay. Because apart from that, mm -hmm. you don't have any, any challenge. No. Averagely, how much do you think, if I want to start now, mm. averagely, how much do you think I'll be needing to start? About a uh, thousand CDs will do. You're sure, mommy? Yes. How about my structure? Or oh, it's not part of the uh, thousand? Okay. It is not part. It is not part. Yes. But for the animals only? Yes. Okay. I can mm. use thousand to actually start. Yes okay all right so viewers you're still watching the Ghanaian farmer my name is Enyonam and on this episode we bring you beginners guide startup farmers who have been asking and you know we want to see that farming video today we found ourselves in Greenworth farms it is a commercial farm please don't be deceived though <laughs> this is just a small part 
for you to get to know about dark farming, the basics to dark farming. And I'm so privileged and honored to be talking to the overall National Best Farmer 2023, Madam Charity Akutia. She is the CEO and the founder of Greenworks Farms, and she is a professional teacher and a commercial farmer. I'm going for a quick breather. When I come back, we'll chat briefly of many other tips that you need to put in place, security-wise, to protect your baby ducks from crows that are in the sky and everything. I'll be right back after this. Thanks for staying. Let me know where you're watching from through our social media platform Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. It's all about the Ghanaian farmer and this episode. We are honored to have an experienced farmer who has been in this space for over 30 years to enlighten you about dark farming. Mommy, how do I get to know this is a male and this is a female duck? The females one, a female one, normally they are very cute. Okay. And small. small. Uh -huh. Yes. The males, they are very large big. and big. And they have that red thing like a comb yes. on their hair. Uh huh. Mm. So the female one are the ones that the red thing is very small, small. Yes. But the male ones are the one with the big red yes. thing on their head. Yes. Okay. And, and the female ones mm -hmm. they are small, small. Okay. Uh, now yeah. let's see. After they lay the eggs, mm -hmm. how many weeks does it take to hatch? About well, twenty-eight days. Twenty-eight days. Yes. Okay. So after the hatchery, what do I do to my baby ducks? Because of the crew. Yes. And the other. Uh, animals that will disturb them. Mm -hmm. We have a coop that we place them in okay. to to brood them yes. for about six weeks. Okay. When the feathers started coming, then we open them. Uh -huh. yeah. Now at that stage, what do they eat? We give them starter feed. We have been okay. given feed, and that time too, we've been giving them antibiotic vitamins okay. just to bring their uh, to boost their immune, immune needs. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> one thing I also want to ask is um, some good practices that I need to adhere mm. in my pen. What and what am I supposed to do? Okay, in the morning, you yes. need to clean the feeders and the drinkers mm -hmm. and you give them fresh water. Mm. In the afternoon, to you change for them mm. because they will make the water dirty yes, I know. to avoid contamination. Okay. You give them mm. fresh water mm. all the time. Mm. And you know they are water-loving animals, yes. so you need to provide water for them, mm. good drinking water mm. for them mm. all the time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Elsewhere, you would see that people have a pond where they allow them to go and swim in it. But with yours, there is no pond here at all. Is mm. there any reason for that? Okay, for the, the past 16 years that I've started, I've never given them a pond. Okay. What I realize is with the pond, yes. uh, the young ones will immerse. Okay. Because I want to send them to where my feet pond is. Okay. And uh, after a hatchery, yes. when they are on the pond, yes. uh, they pray. Mm -hmm. They come for it. They pick them mm -hmm. uh, on the pond. Mm -hmm. And some too immense. Mm -hmm. But with this practice, mm -hmm. I do have my ducklings as they are uh, hatched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't, I don't see, I, I've not been giving them okay. any. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Now, um, it's, it's, it's what you have, the, the ducks you have here. Yes. What time of the year do you have mm -hmm. a lot of demand? Uh, as a charity, do you have some ducks? What time of the year? During festivities. Like Christmas? Yes. Easter? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, those who want to enter into railing yes. the ducks, mm -hmm. they also uh, come, come around uh, yes, for, and buy them. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So if I want to start my duck farming, Mm -hmm. Do you advise I buy the baby one and then go and take care of it, or I can just buy? You the can buy one? the mature, not very mature. Okay. About that, uh, about eighteen twenty weeks. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it is not advisable to buy all of them mm -hmm. from the same place because of inbreeding. You can buy the female one from yes. me and go to different farmer uh -huh. to get uh, another another one. one. I see. Yes. Okay. Um, because personally, mm -hmm. we've been changing the uh, the male ones. Okay, how long should my male stay with a female before I change it? Okay, normally what we do is 
when we realized that their uh, young ones, uh -huh. their siblings, yeah. started growing, we changed them because the father may cross the child. Oh. And that one, yes, they don't know anything. Yes, I know. Yes. So okay. when it comes like that, it becomes inbreeding. Yes. Uh -huh. So to avoid that, when they, the, the young ones are of age, okay. then we change the, uh, the male ones. So in a year, how many times do you do the changes? I do it once. Just once? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. The inbreeding, it is not good practice, right? No. Oh, okay. You okay. lose them. Uh -huh. When they started growing, yes. they, will be, they will be dying. Okay. Uh, okay. So. All right. Uh, uh, between ducks and chicken, mm. which one needs more attention? And which one would you, if you are permitted and the market is there, would you uh, expand chicken. or make it? Chicken? Yes. Oh. Mommy, why? I thought you go for your people. So, you know, chicken, the market, the culture yes. of the people, yes. their religion, okay. they like it. Right. Uh -huh. And during festivities, people buy chicken in bulk mm. to uh, distribute to people and others. Mm. So with that one, uh, you make more money. Mm. And with the chicken too, you know the, the eggs. Mm. I don't know people, uh, even personally, I've tasted the egg of... Uh, I, I don't feel the taste. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you don't feel the taste, eh? Mm, I is, like chicken. Mm, it is okay. tasteless to me. Ah, uh, but if I fry it, you know, did you fry or you boil oh, it? Oh, I boiled it. <laughs> the, the size of duck and the size of chicken, which one is bigger? Duck is bigger. Duck is bigger. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. There are those who also like to buy the eggs and then uh, hatch themselves. Yes. Can I do that as well? Yes, people have been giving it to a uh, hen. Uh -huh. And those are a brooding okay for the, uh, okay uh, i see okay mommy we are about wrapping our interview mm. on dark farming mm. what would you tell young women who see farming as tedious or it's a male dominated work and as a result it doesn't even pay did you know you will come here today did you know you arrived here today being declared in the whole of ghana you are the overall winner what do you have to tell them oh i have to tell i'm telling them that Farming is not a punishment. Hmm. If you have determination, uh, uh, business mind, you take farming as your business and you focus on it. You choose a particular, for, the, for example, you decided to go into dark farming. You identify your commodity that you want to go into and you consult the MOFA for advice. They will guide you and you look for your market. Because with the farming, without marketing, you cannot progress. When you look for a market, a market is ready, you venture into it, you will surely come out, you will be successful. Mm. Yeah. So see. they shouldn't worry about mm. uh, farming, it's like this. Mm -hmm. Take it as a business, mm. uh, be prudent, mm. determine, and you, by all means, uh, achieve your aim. Okay, but in this 30 years of being a farmer, what what are some of the pertinent challenges that every now and then you have to work on and, and be going through or you know mending to come this far? Okay. I will not talk about the 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 this and the dark farming. No. Uh -huh. uh, this area, for example, when I come here, yes. uh, we face a problem of uh, water, electricity, theft, labor. It's a major problem here. Okay. Yeah. And also, I'll say that cost of feed, mm -hmm. because you give the feed to the animal, they waste it. Finally, you may not realize what is. Uh -huh. So they are that uh, and uh, land, land fragmentation, because all my farms are scattered. Mm -hmm. They are not at one place. No. Okay. Uh -huh. Because of, uh, I'll say that. Uh, uh, Land litigation, okay. yes. That's why they are scattered all over yes. the place. Okay. Yes. Okay. But how do you still manage to sail through and still keep your head up? The sustainability plan, how have you been doing it? You know, I have made my mind that agri is my business. Okay. So whether uh, left or right, I will manage to pass through. Right. Uh -huh. I always move with the mofa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they guide me mm -hmm. with the modern technologies, mm -hmm. do this, mm -hmm. do that, don't do this, mm -hmm. and I respect them a lot. Mm -hmm. So that has helped me mm -hmm. to make a headway. Okay, so if there is one thing I've learned with all the farmers I've visited, 
this month of recording is about listening to the MOFA officers. Partner with them and they will guide you through and through. Madam Charity Akutia, she said she's made farming her business. She is in it. No matter what the challenges, she will still thrive. And today she's excelling. Just imagine the numerous opportunities that come with being crowned. This one is my crown. <laughs> being crowned the overall national best farmer. It's such an honor to be with her. And like I said, please, this one, I have been looking for that farming interview to do for a long time. So this is just a small part of it. Wait till it's March or April when the season starts or the rains come. I will take you to where the three crops are for you to see something small. But I will definitely bring you other episodes or other interviews right here from Green Wealth Farms, owned by Madam Charity Aquitia. She is a professional teacher and a commercial farmer. Thank you very much for watching. If you need more, you know, engagement, I'll put her website or her social media out there. Just watch it on the screen and you can reach out to them. Either you want to buy some chicken, some goats, some cow, pigs, mushroom, everything that you want to do here. There will be a number I'll put out there so you can reach out to them and do business. Once then, Mommy, thank you very much. Thank God you. bless you. Yeah. All right, then let's have a look at the the the, 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 the that people that's <laughs> hello.